Here, we're moving into introducing a brand new thermodynamic function, something known as enthalpy, which we describe as H, and we assume that pressure is constant when calculating enthalpy. What does that mean? Let's take, for example, a beaker of water that's currently being heated by a heat source right over here. Okay, so it's being heated here. We can use enthalpy if we assume that the amount of pressure is one atmosphere, constant. And enthalpy can function as a macrostate on itself, and it is defined by H equals to internal energy plus PV. So H equals to U plus PV has the same unit, joules, and internal energy and volume are both extensive properties, hence so is enthalpy. Hence, note that in thermodynamics and in this course, internal energy, pressure, volume, and enthalpy can be seen as functions of the macrostate. Now, enthalpy is defined as the heat absorbed in a constant pressure condition. And this is really important because almost all processes are carried out under constant atmospheric pressure. Hence, enthalpy is a very relevant parameter on Earth. At constant pressure, the change in enthalpy is equivalent to the change in heat. So here, I want to introduce you to a new term again something known as the specific heat capacity, written as Cp. Specific heat capacity is effectively the amount of energy required to increase the temperature of any kind of matter by 1 degree Celsius or 1 Kelvin. And it is calculated under a constant pressure condition which is effectively this description over here, the change in heat divided by a change in temperature keeping pressure constant. Because we keep pressure constant, the correct way to describe specific heat capacity is dH over dT while keeping P constant. Equation 1.17 tells us that the heat absorbed by a system during a constant pressure process is equal to the enthalpy change. So if we were to take the enthalpy equation and to put it into an open system, assuming a constant pressure condition, the change, it's really quite minor, is the total of inputs minus the total of the output plus change in heat and change in work. The only difference is that we substitute enthalpy for heat. And that leads to the complete description of a change in energy, which is a change in internal energy plus kinetic energy and potential energy. Now, a couple of slides ago, I mentioned that in this course, we assumed that a system was in equilibrium. What that really means is that the open system, okay, has an equal amount of energy going in and an equal amount of energy going out. We describe that as a steady state. Even though we've got materials going in and out, the change in internal energy is zero. In this course, we assume that all open systems live in a steady state. 
And in this case, we can actually rewrite the first law as the total amount of heat and work is equivalent to the total amount of energy going out minus the total amount of energy going in.